What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today. Like my man Steve Harvey done say, it's Joe List. Joe List, a great New York comic, uh, a great actor, great writer, great comic, has a special out right now. Uh, please go check it out. We love Joe List. Uh, it's available right now. Click on the link in the description down below. Like Roddy Rich done say, down below. Uh, check out Joe List. We love him. Uh, he's also on tour. Go check him out. I'm on tour in the fall, baby. Come see me and Bobby Lee on the road. Go to badfriendspod.com, badfriendspod.com to see that. Chicago, Denver, uh, Milwaukee, Madison, New York, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, D.C. We're all over the place. Go to badfriendspod.com, badfriendspod.com. Enough rambling from the old redhead. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. All right, is it recording on all of them? In focus on all of them, kiddo? All right, we'll see. Hey, Joe. Joe's my editor. Uh, say hi to Joe into that camera right there. Oh, there's another Joe. Yeah, there's hi, another Joe. Joe. He was just here actually 10 minutes before you, oh. you were here. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want to meet you. <laughs> Did not like you. I wanted to meet Joe so bad. He said he's a fan of your comedy, but not of you as a guy. Wow. Which I think is very specific. Yeah, my wife says the exact opposite. Oh, no. She thinks I'm great, but the, the stand-up. <laughs> I bounce bits, and she's like, nah, sucks. I love you, and let's get started. Use that part, Joe, by the way, because it's gold. Anytime a guy's letting us know how much his wife hates him, we like it on this show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say the wrong. My guest, my name is once again today. It's Joe List. Yeah. Joe List. Yeah. Joe List is in the house. I disres disrespectfully um, uh, did not have him on the show last time. You f me. Uh, bad. And I said, I don't want this guy in my studio. Um, I got caught up in a scheduling, so I told you I am so sorry about that. It's all and right. And now I have you here, um, and uh, I'm happy that you came because we ran into each other in Phonics in Tempe at the Improve, mm -hmm. the last place that I saw Mitch Hedberg before he died. Oh, wow. Yeah, I went to school at ASU, and I saw him there, and it was a terrible, terrible show. Wow. Terrible, because he was just laced up out of his mind. I often ask people when I would go to clubs, uh, who was like the toughest person to work with, who sucks to work, like who's an asshole. And a lot of people, they said he wasn't an asshole, but they said Mitch Hedberg was one of the toughest people to work with. Yeah, he because was, he'd be so he was probably up. just never there. Yeah, I think he went short or long or late or whatever. I never met him. And had really weird requests. No, I, I mean, I never met him either. I'm, how old are you? We're kind of the same age, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I'm 41. Yeah, I'm 40 this year. Uh, uh, he was... Uh, yeah, he. I was in college when he had done when he was doing his last shows. Right. And I remember it being like, you know, I had seen so many comics there when I was in college, uh, and I was like obsessed with comedy at the time, but like secretly doing that thing where people were like, "Are you ever gonna do it?" And I'm like, "No," you know. But I was like lying because I just didn't want anybody to know. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't want anybody to use it against me and be like, "You're never gonna fucking make it." Well, dreams are embarrassing. They're so you know, embarrassing. You don't want to tell They're people. So I want to embarrassing. Sing. We were just talking. I was talking about Henry Phillips about this. You must know Henry, yeah. one of my yeah. favorite people ever. Yeah. Like he started off as like a, a singer, and he is a singer. He's a comedic singer. But like the idea of as hard as it is to be a comic and come out as a comedian. The idea of being like, Andrew, check out this thing. I just wrote the, I love you so much. <laughs> like, yeah, my friends would beat me up. Yeah, immediately. I kind of wanted to hit you when you started singing. Yeah, it's bad. I thought about it. And so God bless Jackson Brown and all these, James Taylor, all these people that just had enough whatever to be like, I don't care how many people call me a homo. I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> it's... And I'm grateful for that. I love it. That's all I listen to now is like Avit brothers and like really, I need people with like skinny pants and fedoras to tell me well, how I, I like feel. Yeah. So you're stuck in that era. You like that era the most musically. Yeah. Well, I like, I like a lot of stuff. I mean, I rock still, but the older I get, the Not less the way I'm you like... just said that. I don't believe it for a heartbeat. Well, I like... rock still. I mean, I, I you will. sound like my stepdad trying to sell me on no, I'll go to a rock Morgan show. Morgan Wallen is good. We rock with Morgan. Dude, it's so f***ing crazy you just brought this guy up. <laughs> Can I tell you a story? Yeah. So, not a story, but I guess it's a story. Morgan Wallen, I've never heard of this man in my life. My sister texted me and said, my niece is going off to college this year. And she said, hey, do you have an in? Because she knows I have an agent and a manager who can sometimes get us tickets to things. She goes, do you have an in for Morgan Wallen tickets? I want to give it to your niece as a going away present. 
And I never heard of this guy. So I thought it was going to be like at the House of Blues or something. And I was like coming right up. Mm-hmm. And I, I messaged my agent. I, I just looked online. He's doing three shows at Fenway Park. Yeah. Like he's bigger than Springsteen. Yeah, he's huge. Never heard of the guy. And then uh, so just today, my agent sent me a thing being like, here you go. But it was two tickets at face value. I thought I was getting free tickets. And they were like 300 bucks. So now I'm like 700 bucks in <laughs> on my niece. And it was, we're too far in to tell my agent, because he's been working on this, to sure. be like, never mind, I don't want them. So now I just bought my sister and niece $700 Morgan Wallen tickets. Wow, they're 350 a pop? They're like 295 with a fee, and that's face value. Like on Ticketmaster or StubHub, they're like 900 bucks. I never heard of this man. It's amazing. He did two shows at Petco. This is the guy that said the N-word. Yeah. Yeah. He said the N word on like accident him. drunk. Well, that's why I like him. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like him. His music is shit, but yeah. the N word clip, I thought this guy's my guy. I can get on board with this. But apparently, they tried to like cancel the guy publicly. You know, like it was like a big backlash, blah blah blah. And then he just played Petco. I think he did two shows in San Diego at the at Petco Park. Yeah. And the same radio station, a country radio station down there, that was like <laughs> shaming him. They did a whole week dedicated to him. The week that he did the shows, they renamed their channel like the Walt Walt. <laughs> wall an hour or whatever and it's it's just so funny it's like that is the uh, that is the that is the scope exactly of what canceling people are it's like livid 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 he's coming and we're gonna make money off him we kind of like him like him like him like let's get him back in our good graces because we're gonna make a lot of money two shows at petco of course it's nuts and they sponsored it it's crazy yeah it's all silly i mean roman polanski won best director in 2002 like standing (laughs) oh woohoo (laughs) <laughs> like they loved it. It's crazy. It's so funny. Someone told me a story. I think it was um it might have I forget what comic it was, but somebody told me a story like second I think it might have been Alan Havy. It was second hand. He heard a story from someone else that was at a Hollywood party. And um there was a few guys, Polanski, one of them, and maybe whoever, Nicholson and Bruce Dern or somebody, whoever, whatever people, and they were like, Look at that girl, that girl looks so young. And somebody was like, She looks fifteen. And Polanski looked at her for like an extended period of time and went, Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> like he like he like eyeballed her and was like, no, nah, no, nah, you're four months ahead. And I was like, that's really crazy. Like the people that guess your weight at the carnival, he yeah. does that. To, He's just on it. But I mean, circumstantial girls. evidence, but very creepy. Uh, he knows right away. He goes, look at her knees. You can tell that's 14 year old <laughs> knees. I know when I see them. Yeah, they, they uh, the, going back to the Morgan Wallen guy, they tried to cancel him. Now he's selling more tickets than ever, which is, of course, like the response that everybody would expect when the guy who sings country music says the N-word, for some reason they were like, we're going to get him. And his fans were like, I like him so much more now yeah, than yeah. I ever liked him before. Yeah, we're good. He was going to do one show at Fenway. Now he's doing right, three. Right. At Boston, you think people in Boston don't like the N-word? It's it's part of their vocabulary. It's the N-word bump. Yeah, you get, a, you get a nice bump the N-word bump. The N-word. <laughs> Do you remember the N-word bump that he got? Yeah, that was something special, man. Yeah, he. Uh, I saw all this news about him just recently. I don't know who he is, really, and I never heard of him until... The news about him selling out all these baseball stadiums is going around. And it's, look, I I just did this tour with Burt and playing outside to me would only be easy if you were a musician because it doesn't really matter. There's no call and response needed. Like at the end of the song, they get to clap. Right, right. And they will anyway. But doing these outdoor venues, like we did 15,000 seats at the Gorge in Washington, which I'm wearing now, I think. And it was amazing. But you feel, I talked to Norman about it. You feel so anxious because you're like, it doesn't sound great yeah, because yeah. it can't. You'll never hear laughter as loud as clapping and yelling. Right. So when you first get out there, it's like, ah, and you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. And then your first couple of jokes, it's like, ah, you're like, oh, no, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. It sinks in your chest. It's outside venues. I, they're tough. I know some comics love them. I just I can't do it. It's no, like, it doesn't seem fun. I mean, I haven't done an outdoor gig in quite a while, and it was probably a college in like 2006. Or COVID. Did you guys have COVID oh, outdoor yeah, gigs? Oh, yeah, God, I fucking blacked out COVID. Yeah, I did yeah. a lot of... I don't know what I'm talking about. Like rooftop gigs? I, I did like 300 outdoor gigs two years ago. <laughs> I'm an idiot. But they were small, right? Do At least it's like when they're outdoor and they're close, you can see and hear all of it. This was so big that there are people on the lawn that are legitimately 400 yards away. Where you're like, I, I, how do they hear me? Yeah, I don't understand how that works as an audience member. I think you're just like... Well, it's an experience. Chuckling. Yeah, yeah, the experience is great, but it's hard to like... It's electric in here with laughter. Yeah, anyways. you're never going to get... I mean, Bert definitely got it because it's his fans hardcore. Like, he definitely got those roles that were... It's, it was incredible. And, you know, the rest of us, like, Big J and everybody did great. But, like, the difference is 
he did get the role because they're so excited to see that guy. They're like, they're so enthusiastic. It's like they're, uh, they can't wait. And poor Stavi, in the middle of Stavi's set, a guy passed out. So he had to stop the show. 15,000 people are like silently looking on oh, and they God. carry this guy out on a, on a stretcher. And the whole time, you know, we can see him from the side stage and this poor bastard is like, I can walk. I can walk. And everybody's <laughs> laughing and they're like, let him walk, let him walk. And the paramedics are like, no, you don't get to. And he's like, I can walk. Please let me walk. And Stav in the middle of it goes, why couldn't this have happened during Santino's set? <laughs> and I'm on the side stage just like losing. I felt so bad for the guy. But it, that broke it up in a way where it also was even harder for him to crawl back into this rhythm of all these fans outdoors. So it's just musicians. I get it. When they play outdoor sta- or, uh, stadiums, you're like. I'm sure that's incredible. For us, it's so hard, man. Yeah, no, it doesn't seem uh, great. I did uh, indoor 15,000 people with Louis C.K. <laughs> um, and I did, we did Madison Square Garden three times. He did it like eight times. I did it three times with him. But one time, it was the last show, and I think he sold five that year, and this was the fifth show, so wow. it was people that didn't seem to be into it, and I just ate shit so hard. And <laughs> he didn't do great either, that particular show, but I fucking bombed. And you know how every once in a while you'll do a joke and one guy laughs and like the instincts be like, this guy gets it. Look yes, at this guy. Yes. I almost did that at Madison Square Garden. There was like <laughs> one guy in 317. You just hear, oh, oh, oh. and I was like, I won't address it, but fucking that guy, he gets it. He got it. Yeah. And that's indoors with the fucking roof. So an outdoor bomb, I mean, especially a gorge, it like resonates through the mountain yeah. tops. But that's the thing is like nobody bombed, but in nobody, it's, you didn't, it's, it's like you're just doing jokes. Do you know what I mean? It's almost yeah, yeah. like, a, you know what it felt like auditioning for Last Comic Standing? Right. Where, like, they're like, no, you did good. And you're like, <laughs> oh, okay, I guess. <laughs> they're like, we're never going to use it, but it was okay. It was fine. Yeah, yeah it just, was totally fine. Did it, you ever audition for that, by the way? I did. I actually, I've, I've had two Last Comic Standing, uh, what do you call it? Sessions? Sh- showcases? Showca- well, I, I did well both times. I made it to LA, um, what do you call it, season whatever, 2010. Uh-huh. They did a thing. It's funny because I just saw Felipe Esparza. It was the year he won it. I love that and guy. He, he brought it up to me. It was so touching because it was 13 years ago. And he was like, what happened to you on that show? I can't do accents. No, no. Please keep going. <laughs> what, what happened to you on that show? He's Japanese. Um, <laughs> good old yeah. Japanese Felipe Esparza. Felipe Esparza. <laughs> uh, I'm not good with voices. It all turns out pirate. But... I did Last Comic Standing 2010, and uh, it was the Tommy Jonigan Felipe Esparza season. Oh, yes. And they did a thing that I guess the previous year they had told people, you're going to the next round, and then afterwards called and said, we said that to too many people, so you're, you're not going. You got that call? No, so this time they said, we are not doing that again because mm. we, we fucked everyone over last year. We're not doing that. If you get say you're going to the next round, you're going. So I got called, and I mean, this is like a long story, but I had a girlfriend that was lived with me. I was in love with her, and she moved to uh, Argentina. I was, like, devastated. Wow. She went to teach English in Argentina. It was, like, ruined my life. And then, like, a month later, I did Last Comic Standing, and I, I fucking went on to the next round, to the semis or whatever, and I looked in the camera, and I was like, I miss you, Becca. Like, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to get her back. This is going to be crazy. And then uh, I got my ticket to L.A., I went to L.A., and we did the semifinals, whatever, in the theater, yada, yada, did well. And then it came time for the show to air, and I told everybody I'd ever met in my life, I'm on Last Comic Standing, and they just totally cut me out of the show. I never appeared for a second. Just nobody warned me, no appearance. And everybody was like, hey, were you just fucking with us? That's hilarious. You weren't on there? And I was like, no, I was. They cut this. Like, I got completely edited out. Oh, man. It was devastating. At the time, so I lost my girlfriend and my TV credit. And I had email. I have emails from her. I'm like, I'm going to be famous when you get back. I just, I'm I'm on Last Comic Standing. I'll be a household name. Hope you're not fucking too many Argentinian dudes. And she I'll still be here waiting for you. Yeah. Whatever happened to Becca? Becca, uh, I think she has, like, she's married with children now. But I did go to South America and and hung out with her and... uh, you know, tried to get her back. I tried to get her back, and she didn't, was like, "No, no good." No. And I was like, "All right, I came a long way." No bueno, Mister List. Yeah. No bueno. Take off. But I, I think she's I, doing well. I auditioned once uh, in San Francisco. My, me and my buddy Kenner, who doesn't do comedy anymore, we drove up there and we spent the night outside. It was like an experience, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was so excited about it to go. To, it was at Cobb's, I think the auditions were. Oh wow! And uh, ate such a fucking humongous <laughs> bag of dicks that like. 
I couldn't believe that we did it, that we drove up there. I was like mad about it. Like We're, after I got off, we I was like, we spent the night in line, slept outside. It was a great experience. But then I was like, I would have rather just driven to San Francisco, spent the night and then eaten food and hung out and drank instead of doing this like terrible audition at 1030 in the morning, eating shit and then being like, I guess we'll drive back to L.A. Were you pretty new at that time? Yeah, that had to been. God, I don't know what year that was. I don't, honestly, probably like, yeah, it must have been 09, 08, 09, 010, right. something like that, 10, 2010, 010, 010, 010, 010. <laughs> well, it is technically, it's 2010. So yeah, it's 2010. Yeah, 2010, so I wasn't wrong, Joe, <laughs> asshole. But uh, any, whatever it was, yeah, it was a couple years in, like I started in 06. So, but I wasn't ready, but it was still like, I just should have known better than to even drive up there and to do it. It was like, what the fuck am I doing? Right. I did, I'm not going to get on this show. I, and I also didn't want to be on it. I felt like it wasn't a, a platform that I'd be good at anyway. So it was all for naught. But after that, people were like, the following years, ensuing years, everybody we knew was like, are you going to try out? Are you going to try out? It's like, no way, never. Well, it was exciting because you could get on network TV. And I did it again, um, I guess it was 2050, the Norm Macdonald year. And that, and that year I was, was a finalist. Awesome. I was in the top 10. And, and Norm was very sweet to me. And I, I did well. I, that one I made a bunch of money because it was like Union. Oh, so it was oh, great. Wow. Yeah. I, I was, yeah. I was, was it Ro Roseanne too? Wait, who else was a judge? Maybe it was Roseanne. I feel like it was, it was Norm Keen, I think it was Keenan Ivory, yeah. Wayne's Roseanne, and, and, Norm. and Norm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I lost to um, the guy who won, whose name is. God, I'm a fan of him. Puka de Beppo. Black guy. Clayton. Clayton English. Clayton English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, He's great. funny. And, yeah. um, Big fan, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't have posters. <laughs> when I see, I like seeing him, and I think he's very funny. You, you know, get a I'm picture not... of him every time you see him. Yeah, yeah. Clayton, <laughs> big I fan. I don't big have signed fan. headshots of the guy. But uh, that was great, and uh, I made money, and Norm was incredibly sweet to me and, uh, and, and tweeted about me. It's on the record. So That's I, huge. Because some people at home are probably like, Norm doesn't like this fucking hack piece of shit. <laughs> and uh, he, I have the receipts, folks. I'll text you. <laughs> He does. He did like you. He yes. liked you very. He talked about you right before he died. That's what everybody says. That's what I, I can't tell if you're joking, but he actually guy. did. Yeah, that list guy. It sounds like you're kidding, but on his deathbed, he said Joe List is number one. <laughs> Joe List, number one. Love that guy. <laughs> Gone. Uh, no, no, Where, was the great. What year did you? What year did you uh, quit the sauce? I know you've been sober a while, but uh, yeah, long? ten years. Uh, twenty twelve. End of twenty twelve. December twenty eighth, two thousand twelve. I feel like I remember maybe you posted or someone did. There was a picture of like you, Bargazzi, Soder, a bunch of guys like shit faced on a patio with your shirts off. You yeah, that photo? sounds right. Yeah, that was yeah. at Nate's house. And for some reason, we all took our shirts off. Yeah. And uh, DeRosa was there. Well, DeRosa's always there. Yeah. And uh, I can't and, remember. And that was else. shortly before you got sober. That's like, yeah, maybe could have been a year, a year or two, two right? maybe. Two, yeah, I don't know what and year. And I don't know. That maybe was. I talked to Soder about it, but he was talking about how like, you know, it was a, th that group was just like, you guys were partying constantly together. Yeah. And a few people it. cleaned up, went away, and then a few <laughs> people just kept partying. <laughs> yeah, we got after it. It was fun. I mean, that's all I ever wanted to do. I mean, I really fucked up a lot of... Uh, I wasn't real um, good at the career stuff. I'm still not. <laughs> Great. Every time I text you, I throw my phone across the room asking if I could do your podcast. No, it's horrible. <laughs> I did that with Burr one year. I was, like, I, I was like, I just did a new special. I'm so sorry. Could you promote it? If not, don't worry about it. And I fucking whipped my phone in the other room <laughs> and didn't look at it for two hours. And then it turned. he wrote back like two minutes later and he wrote, yeah, I think I like you more than you do or something like that, which was he's, very sweet. He's probably, that's probably true. But yeah, we got, uh, yeah, we went, we went fucking crazy. We went hard till 2012. Yeah, I put in a good, yeah, 12 years of drinking or so. I started drinking late. I, did you drink in high school? I started after high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely have a, I definitely like it a lot. I do, I've been doing it a lot. <laughs> well, that's very, I uh, started drinking, I started drinking when I was probably 14, 15. And then, you know, but not really partying. It was like once in a while you'd sneak stuff, you go to a party and. Yeah. And then in college, I really learned how to let it rip. And then after college, I moved out here and I was broke. And so, you know, when you could afford to, we'd go out. Right. And then now it's more of a casual thing, unless it's like, I have to go like out with Bert and those guys. And then you, they're just like, get ripped. And then you just like, feel like this weird universal force to just continue to drink. But yeah. I, now I dry out a lot. Like I'll do weeks and weeks with drying out now. Cause 
I just can't do it anymore. Yeah, that's good. Well, you start to get hungover. Once I hit 30, my hangovers were, like, devastating. Yeah, it's disgusting. In my 20s, I'd play, like, hoop the next day and be like, fucking yow! Yeah. You know? I did a left tomahawk jam. (laughs) I can really ball. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I mean, you start to, it starts to hurt more. And I don't know, I never did any drying out at all. You just continue, yeah, it never was a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would, uh, maybe a couple days. But I think as you continue to drink as you get older, like, when you start to reach around 40, you do become cognizant of the ramifications. So you go, let me just, let me just temper this. And if I can't temper it, then I need to go get help. That's kind of, that was like always my thing was like, if I have a problem where I just can't go, well, I'm not drinking for a little while. Yeah. Uh, then I, then I, that, that to me was my key indication, but there's no, you know what it is? I also talk to people that go like, I have a lot of friends that are sober. I mean, Bobby's my best friend. He's been sober. I mean, he's fallen off a few times, but, um, you know, the one thing I always noticed was there is no such thing as like a, uh, you know, an idyllic alcoholic where it's like, this is exactly what every alcoholic does. Everyone has their little things. But the one thing that the response to stress or pain or trauma usually is people say like, man, I, that's when I really want to have a drink when I'm like bummed or sad. To me, it's the opposite. Like, I don't want to go home and drink by myself. Right. I'm a social slut. Like, I cannot wait to go see people to have drinks with them. Yeah. But yeah. if I'm alone... I have zero interest in drinking alone at my house. Well, that's good. Well, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Good, that's that was the one sign. thing I learned because for years I'd be like, man, I like to party a lot, but it's always with humans. It's, I've, I've never enjoyed being by myself and drinking or with my, my lady. I, it's like her and I rarely drink at the house. Like we do sometimes, but usually it'll be like, do you want to go get dinner and have a drink? Whereas most of my friends who had substance abuse problems were like, I couldn't wait to drink alone. Right, like, right. That was my favorite thing to do was to drink solo. Yeah, I liked both. <laughs> I like to drink with everybody and get after it and play games and fuck around and then be in my room by my I mean still now the times I want to drink a lot of times I'm like I just I was in Vegas. I was in Vegas when you guys were there. Yeah. But I had a, uh, some corporate gig and uh, there was like a f- they gave me a suite and it was full mini bar and mm. it looked like this. And I yeah. was like, man, I could really fucking do some damage right now. Nobody would have to know. It'd See, be fun. Uh, that's where it's scary. Yeah. I've almost this is honestly you might think this is, sounds like a lie. I've almost never I can't remember Drinking from a mini bar in my hotel room. Uh, Unless people came over to my room where we're like shooting something and then everyone's in my room drinking. But I've never been alone in a mini bar in my hotel room and had a drink. It, it like reminds me of uh, what's a Denzel movie where he flights the plane? Yeah. Love that film. Like I remember vividly that scene yeah, yeah. where he's just like, just cannot wait to rip that thing to shreds. Yeah. Great film. That movie helped. I watched that movie right before I got sober. It was like, that movie's like a two hour AA meeting. It's amazing. It is, it and I, I didn't, I thought it was like an action movie thing or something. And I was watching it like crying and being like, that's me, man. <laughs> that's a great, great film. It is a good film. Zemeckis. He's so good. He, um, he's, oh yeah, that was a Zemeckis movie. Yeah. Yeah. It? Yeah. He's awesome. Um, I went one time. I went to Iraq with Bargatze to do comedy, and uh, you were I came fighting back. as well. Yeah, yeah, we did a little fighting. Yeah, it was a make a wish. They put us up. <laughs> on the they front wish lines. you would go die on the lines. Yeah, they're shooting at us. Nate My wish like, is for Joe List to be on the front lines and get clapped. <laughs> Nate's like, I mean, we're not even ready. Um, that was a decent impression. I thought that was pretty good. It wasn't wasn't my best, but. Um, yeah, we went for like 10 days. I remember coming back and talking to my friend who was a sober guy and being like, dude, I think actually I might be good. Like, I just went 10 days without drinking and I feel great. And my buddy was like, well, that's not really a test to go to a Muslim war-torn country where there is no alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Like, you were unable to drink. Yeah. If there was a bar there, I'm sure you would have drank. And you're like, yeah, yeah. I mean, after yeah. the end of the show, you're tired and, you know, it's hot. What <laughs> it's am a I lot. Gonna, I mean, what am I going to do? I'm sacrificing for the good of the American people. But, what, was uh, it? what was that, a USO thing? Yeah, this guy, uh, Scott Kennedy, who's also dead. I was his favorite also. Another guy in the deathbed. He was like, Was he a comic or just a Kennedy? He was a comic. He was a comic, and uh, he ran all these tours. He just went over there all the time. Did he die over there? No, no. I think he was... Seemed pretty on the nose. He was a, uh, he was a big guy. I think he... I don't know. His heart gave out or something. That sounds like a, a Curb Your Enthusiasm bit where he's like, Yeah, man, he died in Iraq. And like, Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. But you don't want to tell them that it was... He had a heart attack. It wasn't for yeah, war. Yeah. He was just fast. He was organizing USO stuff. He had a heart attack. Um, you were on Curb, right? I did an episode, yes. It was like one of the best moments of my entire life. I even said, I remember saying when I got the check, I think it was like $800 or something. I don't even remember. It was something menial. Yeah. And I remember thinking, I couldn't even care less about that. I would have paid to be on the show. Yeah. But when you're young... Like when you when you first start out in the comedy world, you're like, I would kill to be on that show. You also do think 
and you're on TV, you get a nice big check and da, da, da. But then you realize, no, 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 you work super hard to get on these things. And it's the moment that matters because the money doesn't exist on those things. You right. do guest stars, you get paid dog shit. You don't make any money. Yeah. That's why they're out there marching in the streets, baby. I keep driving by with my hand out the beep, window. Beep, and they, yeah. they get really excited. Nothing's feel, gonna nothing's gonna fucking change. I know. I feel happy though when I, I give the, and they're like, yeah. It is and fun. I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. What do you, I don't care. <laughs> I uh, you know, it, it that whole thing is uh such a convoluted back and forth. It feels as political as like when you watch election stuff and you're like, everyone's making so many points. I wouldn't even know who to follow. I hope the writers get what they want. I hope the actors union gets what it needs, but you're also like that's all. That's only. That's the only effort I'm putting into it. Right, right. I can't do anything more than that. I'm like, dude, get pay these guys. Also, uh, I'm gonna walk away. Yeah, I feel kind of similar. And sometimes I driving around here, you get excited. I feel, I'm like, I want to put on some Pete Seeger and like, <laughs> if I had a ham and get out there. But it's hot out. It's is too the hot. Thing. It's, it's way a little too hot. toasty. Yeah, I saw on the news today, as as monotonous and stupid as weather conversations are, the heat index in the mid in the Middle East. Look this up was 151 the heat index wow it said it was detrimental to human life and existence to be out in oh 151 God. heat index 152 was Whoa. the heat index and that was in where what part what country what did it say persian gulf international wow. airport so the persian gulf but it, but when i saw the article i thought maybe people will start to believe it now <laughs> Like, now is it finally when you're like, all right, 152 heat index. 152, that feels too high. Well, heat index. So yeah. not actual temperature. Right, but still. Doesn't I mean, matter. That's a, like a wrestling weight class. I mean, that feels, <laughs> that's, bad, that's bad news. As someone who's been to Iraq and yeah. fought and Thank performed. God. Yeah, God bless. Uh, God yeah, bless. I can really, I can connect to how Did you complain? Were you is. over there complaining? Did you do the thing where you're like... We could have had a better suite than this. We should have been treated a little bit nicer. No, but there was time. I mean, a little bit. There was times where because you're the least important person there. Yeah. Like by that's their rules, not ours. That's that's them talking. <laughs> any helicopter or transportation, like anybody needs it, they get it before you. So there'd sure. be a lot of times where you would wait for a helicopter for like ninety minutes or whatever, and then to like, get back like, to where you needed to yeah, go. Yeah, and you're like, we're on the next one, and then some fucking dickhead in the army would show up and get it <laughs> so we had to keep being like ah, ah, ah. and so nate and i were just like sitting in a car and it was very warm i don't know if it was 152 but it was I very toasty it. yeah and um so that was annoying at, at times like that and then nate and i can be you know competitive um not in comedy obviously but uh well yeah because he's below you in comedy yeah yeah, yeah. I've, I've destroyed him you so surpassed much. him so graciously it's so <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't gonna say it but yeah i will um, you heard me nate but uh, yeah, we would play basketball and stuff, and then like you know, what, someone would lose, and we'd be fighting. And you beat be him at basketball. Matt, Nate and I were actually when we played, we were like pretty. Similar. Even. We would yeah, we would kind of um, cancel each other out. Nate and I have golf competition. Him and I, him and I are competitive in golf together. Yeah, you're a good golfer, right? I beat him when I was in Vegas. What's wow. up, Nate? How are you, buddy? Wow. No, no, he's actually and he's quite good. But we're we're very similar in our game, our our, our games. But I went out to Vegas to go see him because he was playing the win, and we share an agent. And I had a day down, and I was texting him. I was like, I think I'm going to come just play golf. It's a 36-minute flight. I was yeah. like, why wouldn't I do that? So the luxury of life is nice that I was able to come home on tour and go play with him because it was great. I also haven't seen him in forever. Uh, but he is competitive. I'm, in the, uh, we, I'm the same way. I think most comics are competitive by nature. If you're not, it would seem hard to, to succeed in the business because beyond the fact of you, like, you're a very funny dude. I've known you for a long time. You've Thank always you. been funny. If you had no competitive edge you would just be a guy that's funny. I think you naturally have to have some kind of some kind of dog in you a little bit. I think so. I don't know, but don't you find out there you meet these com they're not like like uh, not our kind of guys, but there's plenty of fucking dorks that are doing jokes. I don't, they don't yeah, see that. Yeah, but are they but uh, but is their career on an ascension? Uh, like are they growing? I think like it's okay. It doesn't matter not. if you want to continue to do comedy and be I'm just saying like the guys that I see that Nate's a great example. The guys that I see like Nate who are competitive and hardworking, they begin to edge out and edge right, out. Right, it right, right. It's a natural progression. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, if you yeah. look at any great comic that you like, Louis is quite competitive. Chappelle is unfucking yeah. believably competitive. I mean, yes. would argue with you about, you know, my, the color of my hair, and it's my hair. You right. know, 
and I'd lose. Yeah. It's just that that's a natural progression for people at a certain level. You kind of have to be. It's kind of like when somebody says every CEO is an asshole and you're like, kind of. It's kind of hard to right. get there without being a little bit of a dick. Now, do you think you can become a billionaire without being an evil piece of shit? Because that's a very no. popular No, opinion. I don't. I don't think so. I think you can become a multimillionaire without right. being an evil piece of shit because at some point, I've, I know a few. I know three billionaires. And really? I don't, know, I don't know them well, but I've Nate met Bargatze. them. Nate Bargatze. <laughs> 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 Nate Bargatze. Nate uh, Bargatze. No, I know, I know these few guys that I've met through the grapevine of other people that I know, and I don't know them well, but what I know is they are, they share something in the way that they interact with people and the way they think about people and the way they like talk to you. It feels very much, uh, very divisive. They're extremely calculated usually. Like Jost had a great joke on SNL on, on um, Trump, Trump's initial running maybe. Uh, it was a phenomenal joke because SNL constantly was like, fuck Trump, fuck Trump. And finally he was like, yeah, but also I can't stand people going, he's an idiot. He's a moron. You're like, I don't know a lot of moron billionaires. I, right. he, I know a lot of asshole billionaires, but he goes, you're never going to hear someone go, yeah, remember that kid that used to eat paint chips in <laughs> sixth grade? <laughs> right. He's a billionaire. It's right. like, no, that's not, that's never the case. So in the same way, these billionaires, the few that I've met through other people, and I, again, I don't know them on a personal level, but they feel the same and it's hard to describe. And I'm not saying they're bad people. They're just, you have to be extremely divisive and not afraid to step on people to get stuff. Right, it, that's right. the only way to get there. It, it would, it's, it's impossible to use the workforce at that level to get that amount of money without taking risks and losing people and losing things. It's impossible. Right. But, um, but like a guy who's like a multimillionaire that runs a small business, you know, that makes three, four million a year, uh, you know, it, yeah, no, you could be that and still be a giving, good hearted human. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, the, we know comedians that are very wealthy. That yeah, are and that are good very people. Nice. But, yeah. but, 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 bi billionaire, I don't know, man. I just don't think that's a, I think that's a weird, there's a guy, I wish I would never say it, but there's a guy who I know, we played golf. And he lost, and it was like 30 bucks, and he didn't want to pay. He was like livid about it. <laughs> and I was like, 30 bucks? But that, 30 bucks! That's got to be some other kind of competitive thing. That's but like I feel a... like that runs in that same vein of like, you know, you heard about Jordan, right? Jordan is yes. one of these notorious I've golfers who never wants to pay but always wants you to pay up when you lose. And he bets hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it right. doesn't matter if he lost at all. But he wants you to pay fast. Right, right. But that's the rumor. I don't know if that's true, but it, but it feels right because he's so competitive and he's so successful. It's a part of it's a, it's it's a part of the thing, you know. Right. Would you ever want to be that rich? Um, not billionaire. Billionaire. No, that feels. I, I'm like I'd be, I'd be too afraid I was gonna die. I feel like as soon as you have a billion dollars, you're like life's gonna end. Something bad's gonna happen. I know it. Well, that's when you drink baby blood, dude. That's when you really live forever. Those guys are all on that stuff. Yeah, they drink baby blood, and don't they? They have. Children, too, as far <laughs> yeah. as I understand. That's part of the baby blood. Yeah, okay. That's where it comes from. I see. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by BetterHelp. I've talked about BetterHelp so much on this show because I believe in speaking to someone. I believe that therapy uh, is wonderful. It's helpful. It's insightful. Uh, it's freeing. Um, there's so much uh, about uh talking to someone that I, I truly believe from a personal standpoint helps you get through the toughest times in your life and even times that aren't the toughest times that are just uh, simply not easy and you need uh, to just become your best self once again. Um, truly, if you're looking to give online therapy a try, you might as well try BetterHelp. Um, it's cheaper than in-person therapy, which I think is huge. Uh, whether you're dealing with you know decisions about your career, relationships, or anything else, uh, therapy is going to help you stay connected to what you really want in life to try to navigate uh, to the best of your ability. You know, I know a lot of people have a lot of qualms about trying therapy, but I got to tell you, it's flexible. You do it on the on the comfort of, you know, your own schedule, from the comfort of your own home. Um, and these are uh, licensed therapists, which is amazing. If you're thinking about uh, starting therapy, why not give BetterHelp a try? It's helped me. It's helped millions of people. Uh, it's entirely done online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Fill out a brief questionnaire, and then you're going to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. What more do you got to lose? If you're looking to speak to someone about anything that's going on in your life, 
maybe it's time to give BetterHelp a try. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash whiskey today to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, better H-E-L-P dot com slash whiskey. Hey, if you ever search your name on a search engine, uh, you know, you'd be shocked at how much of your personal information is getting pushed around the internet. Your full legal name, email, home address, phone numbers. A lot of stuff can be easily found on, online. And it's not just, you know, true for you. It's friends and family and everybody that you know. That's why Aura is here. Aura uh, is incredible. Um, they are an all-in-one online safety solution that helps protect you and your family from identity theft, financial fraud, online threats before they happen. With Aura, you can rest easy knowing that someone is looking out for you. Somebody got your back over there at Aura. If you're a victim of ID theft, if you've done, if you've gone through this before, which I've had a couple of friends have the uh, unfortunate experience of having identity theft, uh, they have White Glove Fraud Resolution Team is going to help you navigate credit bureaus, help you initiate credit freezes or locks and work with you around the clock to resolve it. It's a nightmare, it's a pain. Um, they also reduce uh, those robocalls, telemarketers and junk mail by sending takedown requests on your behalf regularly because man, oh man, am I sick, sick and tired of seeing uh, scam likely or, uh, you know, telemarketer pop up on my phone. It literally tells you that. They're like, that someone's calling to sell you something. They offer a suite of tools to protect you and your loved ones, including real-time alerts on suspicious credit activity, computer virus protection, parental controls, a VPN, and a password manager. It's a, a comprehensive online safety solution that provides almost every tool you'll ever need all in one place. You're looking to get uh, some help protect yourself and your loved ones for a limited time. Aura is offering our listeners a 14-day trial plus a check of your data to see if your personal information has been leaked online. All for free when you visit Aura.com slash whiskey. That is Aura, A-U-R-A dot com slash whiskey to sign up for a 14-day free trial and start protecting you and your loved ones. That's Aura.com, A-U-R-A dot com slash whiskey. Certain terms apply, so be sure to check this out. Ginger. I like gingers. But like, you know, like like a lot of these guys, the richer they get, everyone wants to stay young. Like, DeRosa and I were talking about how everybody is on T now. Everyone's on T. What's T? Testosterone. Oh. Like I'm a lot not of on T. Should I be on T? Are I'm, you on T? I'm gonna look at you and say, yeah. What no, are you I'm not on about? I'm not on are T. Are you kidding? No. Look I'm, at this. <laughs> well, How? You are you are yoked. How? Yeah. No, I was talking about your libido. Your wife has said a few things to me on Oh, what? Get Joe she on T. Yeah, it's pretty embarrassing. Oh, fuck. Can you get Joe on T? That was the subject line. And uh there was I, nothing in the body. That's all it said. I drink tea, folks. <laughs> um, no, I have libido. I, I, I want to fuck all the time. All right, dude, relax. Fuck? You don't need to sell me on Hit it. the Holy cameras. Shit, I'll fuck dude. this fucking twink right here. <laughs> Are you kidding? Can you go twice in an hour? I don't know. I mean, Let's I, get you on tea! <laughs> I guess. I mean, if I had to. My wife and I, well, she's not, she doesn't want to have sex twice in a day. Yeah. We've had sex twice in a day one time. Your whole relationship. Our whole relationship. When did you start, how old were you when you started dating? Uh, 11. No, um, <laughs> 29. I was 29. But it's not about me. It's about her. Like, I think she looks at it as, like, we did Work. that already. Oh. That we knocked that out. Yeah. We had orgasms. That's it. Yeah. I Plus, understand. I pound I understand. that pussy. <laughs> I mean, there's only so much ice to go around. I can't just be destroying this woman's right, vagina. Dude. Yeah. You... But, I, You're that's, a monster truck of a guy. But now, I mean, maybe I have low T or something because now when I come, I'm good for a while. But th I've been on, I'm on like a 12 day road trip and I was jerking off daily the first three well, days. Well, that's, that's because of being away from home. That's like the yeah. empty nest thing where you're like, I got to jerk off. I'm in all, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere else. Right. You feel so free. No, I, I, the reason I ask, I'm not, the, the guys like Bert and those guys are all openly on T and they talk about it. And, uh, Bert. Burt's was because of a fatty liver. They were like, this can fix a fatty liver. Oh, wow. It'll also help you in your, you know, for, it does a bunch of different stuff, but it's like a new craze. And it, it's like where HGH was always kind of like, oh, man, you know, steroids or HGH and everything's look bad on. And testosterone is one of these things where it's, it is a steroid, but, you know, everyone slowly is okay with it. This is going to happen with everything where we slowly become like, okay, we're like, Listen, dude, so you drink a little bit of baby blood. I mean, what do you, you know what I mean? My doctor said it's going to help my vision. I'm having trouble driving at night, so I drink a little baby blood. No big whoop. No big whoop. I think that stuff bleeds into culture so slowly until we don't notice it. Like, we watched that documentary. We talked about it on the other show the, about the cloning. Did you see that, the cloning doc? No. Oh, my God, is it good, dude. It's so creepy. They were cloning camels to start, and it basically <clears throat> turned into, you know, this Japanese, no, this what am I saying? Korean doctor? Yeah, there it is. Thank you. I was searching for it. South Korean doctor that he he basically was like, we can just 
clone humans now. I mean, we're we're ready to go. Like, just give, get, say yes, and we're gonna do it. And, wow. And they don't know if it actually already happened. You know what I mean? Like, we can't check right. down enough of these international billionaires that paid for him to like go to their lab and secretly spend time there. So if you clone someone, do they have the same? Uh... Well, you're talking to a moron. So all I know is what I've seen. I've heard that they, they don't. They share the exact physical DNA, so they will look identical to you. But they don't have the same memories. They don't well, there's have... no chance, no. No, right. they have to build that all from from something, from environment, you know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, I don't know what I would do with it. What would you even do if you got a clone anyway? I would double up on my wife. You would do, oh, so you, she, he would get the second round, the one that you can't do. No, I, t- I, at the same time. Oh, yeah. Well, that would give you no pleasure. You don't know. You don't receive the. There's no receptors for you with him. You're just giving your clones. Right. Some, That's a good point. Yeah. You're not going to gain anything from that. Yeah. She might not be into you it. The either. average person would say, put them to work. Do the shit I don't want to do. Right. You want this guy to That's fuck what your I wife. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant. Clone cuck? Are yeah, you yeah. a clone cuck? Is this, <laughs> clone this cuck. is your whole thing? That's a porn. <laughs> clone cuck. That could be a good porn with this, twins. Yeah, with twins. This is always the, the thing as a kid where someone's like, do go do my homework. Joe's immediately is like, fuck my wife. Yeah, eat my wife with out in me, front of me. With yeah, me. Yeah, well, while, I'm, while I'm there. <laughs> Well, I, I guess I goofed. We'll cut this in post. Probably, no, no, right? leave it in. Yeah, I gotta right. ask you because I, I, I'm, I've always been curious about comedian couples. Do you find it that you guys do get competitive and you have arguments about it, or is it no? There is no place for that in your home. Um, I don't know. I mean, do you fight ever about comedy in in, in the no, business? No, not really. No, we're Good. not big. Fighters. The only thing we ever fight about is that I want to go on trips all the time, and she's like, I have work to do. Right. And I'm like, I know, but it'll be fun. We'll just go to Paris for a week. Woo! I like that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big You've always trip spent your guy. money, huh? Yeah, yeah. I like to go out. Well, I'm a very work-life balance guy, to much to the detriment of my career. But, I mean, we were just talking about that. I come to L.A., and I'm, like, hiking and going to movies. I'm like, this is great. Yeah, but that's I'm, what like, you should do. looking at stars' houses, and people are like, you're going to do uh, fucking uh, the, the, such and this pod? And I'm like, no way. I got to hike. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, it, probably some of it's fear. But, yeah, I like to go and travel and go all the places and take a lot of time and off. she doesn't want to do any of that. She loves it, and she does enjoy it. But she's like, I'm trying to get, move my career further or do this, or I have, uh, you know, a script I'm working on or whatever it is. But So we'll argue in that way. But, um, no, we get along great. It's great. And now you got a kid on the way, so that will shape the, the future of traveling anyway. Yeah. Are you doing the baby moon thing? A lot of people do that. No, I mean we are going to the Cayman Islands in a couple of weeks. Next next week. Um, next week, Joe will be in the Cayman Islands. If you're there, please call. This is the number for the resort right here. We're going to put it up right on the screen. Come down. Please call and ask for the lists. Yes, come. Check she didn't me change out. her name though, right? She kept her name. No, she actually tried. She was going to keep her like. <laughs> she got denied. At the yeah, DMV I mean, was like, no, 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 no. It's a pain in the ass. You have to go and do all the shit yeah, and send the yeah, stuff and yeah. all the stuff back. And we had, she got detained in Paris for like. 12 hours because she sent her passport to this company that was supposed to help you change your name and then she didn't hear back from them so she was like oh I think I got fucked I think I got a bad whatever bad um, batch. like a scam <laughs> a scam so she was like my passport's been stolen and then they did send it back eventually and they're like here you go and then she was like oh it's not stolen I have it back and then we went to Paris and we got there and they were like yeah you reported this stolen and she's like oh yeah but I got it back and they were like, well, that doesn't matter. That's not how it works. <laughs> he reported it stolen. Yeah. So they detained her, and it was, a whole, it was a whole thing. So anyways, long story short, no, she did not change her name. So she kept, she kept it. And that, that's, yeah. that's actually better for her in the long run. Yeah, because we're going to, you know, I'll cheat on her eventually. Is List a then. Nazi name? Yeah, that's right. It's got to be. Yeah. List. Bingo! How fun! It wasn't originally, but Makes we changed list. it. We changed it to be more Nazi. We <laughs> wanted it to sound more. Lichtenstein is what it was before. Um, no, I, don't, I haven't done a 23 and me, but according to my grandfather, and this might have just been because he was around during the war, is that um, all, and this, is, this part is true, that a lot of um, Germans migrated to Ireland in like the 16th or 15th century. So I had many generations of lists in Ireland. So they're mostly Irish. Yeah. Your, family, your mom and dad are Irish sides. Yeah, my mother's side is Scottish and Irish, and my dad's side is Irish, and um, there must be some German along the way, but, like, literally his grandparents immigrated from Ireland. 
something's got you got you guys had to have some German. And I know they're hiding it. Oh from yeah, you. they yeah, don't want no, anybody to know. There's German in there somewhere because because you, you know. feel like you could have had some of it in there. You're tall, slender. Yeah, Irish are short. I'm superior to most. It feels like. Sure. You know. Yeah. Is that written somewhere? <laughs> um, on my uh, yeah. Like, on my, on my, I'm like, superior to most. Um, no, I'm, so I think there's some German there. There's got to be a little bit. German, my favorite line. I'm German Irish. Well, let me tell you something. My Kraut Mick friend. What is that from? The Godfather. Oh yes. When he says, uh, "You, you greasy Guinea wop," and he said, "I'm German Irish." He goes, "Well, let me tell you something." My Kraut Mick friend immediately <laughs> just switches. Uh, greasy great Guinea film. wop is what a great, what a great little jab. Greasy Guinea wop. Great film, everybody. Check it out. Godfather. The Godfather. Just That's what the I'm third here to plug. one. Watch the third one. Part three. Plug the third one. <laughs> Nothing else. I, I I do like that you're a traveler guy. I mean, I don't know you well enough to know that that would be something that you're like super. Like with Ari, it's glaring that he like loves to travel. He'll break his phone and leave for like seven months yeah. at a time. We went and visited him in Ecuador. We were the only ones. Every he said everyone said we're coming to Ecuador, and uh, Sarah and I were the only two that went. I always bail on all these trips that they push out to me. Anyway, Ari will be like. You know, come hike the Andes for a week. And I was like, how the fuck? I don't know where I'm going to be in seven months. And right. he's like, just do it. For me, vacation has to be extremely specific. And it's got to be slotted out of all this shit that I've got going on. So, like, like we're going somewhere in October. I mean, we're going a bunch of places, actually. But it's like, I know it has to be so dialed in, planned out. Right. It's just so hard because work schedules are nuts for me and her. So it just gets harder. But, like... I don't, that's, it's cool to know that about you. Like, now I want to know, I'm curious to know, like, what's your, your music taste you gave me in the 70s, like, what's your dirty, what's your, like, dirty, guilty pleasure music? What shit that you're like, I hate that I like this, because it doesn't music match. Music-wise? Yeah, what doesn't um, match you? I don't know. I mean, I listen to a lot of stuff. I mean, like, I, I'm a big Jimmy Buffett guy. I like Jack Johnson. I try to settle my anxiety so with some, like, Jack Johnson-y vibes. But I'm a big, I'm a huge Pearl Jam guy. I've been to like 48 Pearl Jam shows. Really? Huge Springsteen guy, yeah. Man, the different spectrum. That's amazing. Because Buffett to Pearl Jam. Two, yeah. Like, if you put a Buffett fan and a Pearl Jam fan next to each other, you'd be like, these guys aren't going to get along at all. But they're both both great, wonderful artists. But I'm a big, like, I like that Jackson Brown a lot. Love but Jackson then I'm also Brown. much, uh, I'm a huge Pogues guy and Ramones. I'm a big punk guy, too. Love the Pogues. So a lot of, I, I'm You're a, touching all the bases. Yeah. I what got, don't you like? Um, I don't like Jews. I, he said it. What? You no, heard him say it. That was Joe List. That was not, you heard what he said. Um, no, I like Jew. I like, um, <laughs> there's gotta be a Jew that's a good musician. <laughs> Gene Simmons, I do hate, but, um, <laughs> what's it called? Beastie Boys? Yeah, I'm not big no, into, not but, really, uh, though, yeah, you know? I don't love them, but, Modest um, Yahoo. You're a big Modest Yahoo fan. I don't know who that you is. You don't remember that guy? He had no. a one, you remember that guy? He had Vaguely. A, he had a one hit, he had like a one hit reggae, hip hop, Joey Ramone. Joey Ramone. He's Jewish. He's Jewish. Thank Boom. God. We Jeffrey got Heinem. one. I was going to be, I was nervous for you for a second. Yeah. I was like, dude, there's a bunch out there. You just don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Who's your favorite Palestinian artist? <laughs> Cat Stevens. He, uh, he, he, yeah, converted. Man, he converted. He converted. Love yeah. Cat Stevens. He yeah. converted to Islam and hated America or something like that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they didn't let him back in the country. Remember this? Uh, the guy that vaguely, wrote the peace train, they were like, you don't get to come yeah, back, yeah. dude. Fuck that. Um, but no, I like I like Jews. Jews are cool. All right, we don't Ari, have to keep doing that part. Uh, we get it. We know. Trust me, it's okay. Ari and I are very close. Yeah, the internet believes it by now, Joe. Uh, Everyone Seinfeld, online. Seinfeld, favorite show <laughs> ever. Now, do you know Seinfeld as a guy? No, I brought him on stage one time. I was, um, I was opening for Burr, and uh, I... I was I they asked me to MC the show because Jerry was coming, mm. so uh, I got to bring Jerry on stage, and then I stood next to him while we watched Burr, but I didn't bother him. And then at Colin Quinn's wedding, we were he was there and uh, he was dancing, and I was dancing like next to Seinfeld him. was dancing. Yeah, cannot see he, that he was dancing. And then when he turned his back, I did the Elaine just as like everyone that's was like, so ah, good. that's funny. And uh, and then uh, Colin's premiere, I'm very close with Colin Quinn. It sounds like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, at his premiere of his most recent show, Jerry said, oh, this is a funny story. I've told in a couple of podcasts, so I hope people aren't mad. But um, I was standing around in a circle with Chris Stefano, who you know. Yes. And Mike Cannon. I don't know if you do know I Mike. I do know Mike. Yeah, yeah, Mike's great. So we're hanging out. And Sarah was there, a few people. And Jerry was there doing like a step and repeat. And then he was walking by and he recognized Chris Stefano, And he said, oh, hi, Christopher. And Chris, they shook hands. 
And Jerry kept walking, and I went, oh, my God, I love Jerry. Let me smell that hand. Give me that hand. Mmm, Jerry. <laughs> and um, I did that, and then Mike Cannon was like, he's right there looking at you. And I kind of did one of these, and Jerry was like, what's the deal with this guy? <laughs> he was like right here and just watched me do a bit. At least it was like a bit, a, a funny was it, thing. Joe? Yeah, I was trying to be funny. Hard I mean, Mostly I just want to, I was hoping to get a whiff of Chris's cock. It's more right. him than Jerry, but. Well, it's always out. Um, but yeah, so Seth if Jerry him. knows who I am, it's. Uh, well, he does know, right? He's got to know who you are. I think he knows who I am because I mean, I, I really am friendly with uh, Col- very friendly with Colin. And Colin did say one time, he's like, "I was telling Jerry about your something," so he's heard of me at least about a bit that you did. Yeah, but That's I don't know. The best know thing Jerry. the legends can do is when they pass a bit to someone else. Through, that was like. <clears throat> when I was at the cellar, it made me feel really good because, you know, I'm not there enough for... Uh, the guys that I know are guys like our generation that, that I know over the years, but, mm-hmm. like, Colin doesn't really know me from a hole in the wall. And uh, although he does love glory holes, but I was walking off stage, <laughs> and he gr- he kind of, like, grabbed me a little bit, like, as I was walking by, like, and he's about to go on, and he goes, funny bits, Santino. And I was like, that feels really good. Yeah. Because he doesn't know me. You know, it was like, that felt really good when it's... When he was standing there in the hallway, he was right next to him. But that felt really good. And same thing, dude. At this Burt thing, uh, Lewis Black was did a did a couple of dates or yeah. did a date. And I was like, I love. I've always loved that guy. I just loved how he just like played his own chord the whole time. Yeah. And uh, he gave me a little a little thing, and it like that meant the w- it's for some reason sixteen thousand people yelling and cheering and doing a good set. You're like, whatever, who fucking cares? Yeah. But when he was like, the janitor bit. I love that, and I was like, "Oh man, that's fucking." It made me, it just like it, it'll. It makes comedy worth it in the sense you're like that. That feels so good. Of course, it yeah. feels so good. That's the bit I loved. I, I loved all your bits, but that bit. The, the janitor. Bit. Yeah, out, yeah, we yeah. said that. It's so funny. Lu- and when Lewis said that, it was like uh, it felt almost as good as a Joe List compliment. I that. appreciate that. I gotta tell you. Well, that's what it does. Uh, you do feel like okay, I'm on to something with this. Yeah, when bit. they validate it. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it, you ever have this where a comic goes? Uh, I've had. I tried to do this as a bit. It never worked because I guess it's maybe it's too inside. But people will go like this, dude. What was that? You did one bit that I fucking loved, and you're like this. Uh, the whiskey bit? No. <laughs> <laughs> the TV bit? No. no. <laughs> You're like this. Yeah. Oh, okay. About my stepdad? The, no, I don't, no. You, you have a bit about that? No, no, that one wasn't good at all. <laughs> Anyways, I can't remember the one I liked, but yeah, definitely I didn't like the six you just mentioned. <laughs> You're going down the line of your entire set list. You're like, any of these? You're like, mm. must have been a while ago. Really? Yeah, what hurts even mm. most if they, more if they go, you know what? That wasn't even you. Who went right after you? That's who that was. Yeah, like I've I, had that. Yeah, where somebody goes, where you're on a big showcase with other people, and they go, "Dude, the the um, the Cheez Its thing is so funny," and you're like, "That was so and so," and they go, "Right, yeah, that not, was good. I liked that bit that he did." Yeah, not me at all, but thank you. <laughs> I'm sure you liked something I did. Um, but yeah, so I don't, I don't really know uh, Jerry. No, you don't know Jerry, and it's I don't, I don't, I don't know him at all. I, I've never even. The only time I've seen is when he come, he came here once and did the store after Mitzi died. And I've told this story a lot, but he's he kind of just talked about why he never came back to the stores because she didn't pass him. Yeah, he he can hold a grudge. He had seems. such a fucking grudge; it was unbelievable. Yeah. And he said he bought a house above. Do you know the story? He bought a house above theirs just so he could drive by and say hi to them above them when he was. Isn't that fucking insane? That's great. I mean, that's, that's that competitive. That's a edge very you're Jer- that's what about. we were talking about. Yeah. That's a very Jerry Seinfeld like. I'll show you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm not funny. We'll see. We'll um, see. Colin probably is quite familiar with your act, though, I imagine, because he's a guy that keeps it, he knows what's going on. Maybe, but I, you know, he wouldn't see, I'm here so much, and I'm not there as much, so maybe he's seen me a few times, but... Uh, and you have stuff online, right? A little bit, not really. I kind of avoid putting stuff on the internet for no other reason than I'm a coward, and I'm just like, I hate it. Surely you have comedy specials. Yeah, but they're, you know, like the Netflix one is up there, but I don't put enough of it on the internet. Right, but I mean, he probably has Netflix, this man. I don't think so. I actually think Colin Quinn doesn't have Netflix. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm being honest, he seems like he doesn't have Netflix. He has Hulu Plus. As somebody that's close to him, I could, I could text him. I wouldn't. But I wouldn't do it. Imagine he only has, uh, he only has Discovery Plus. <laughs> it's like, you can't break me away from Discovery Plus, bud. I think he's got things. Plus, he has a wife. She probably watches Organizes things. all his life yeah, and does the thing. I think What's so. the balance in your house? Does your wife do a lot of the shit, or do you also do a lot of the bullshit? Um, she does a lot of the paperwork things. I'm pretty stupid. I'm not good yeah. at the thing. It's very much... Um, 
I pay the rent though. I do that. I have the relationship with the landlord, and I do that. I take the trash out and stuff like that. <laughs> but um, she handles the important. She stuff. pays the credit card bills, and then now I do stuff. I mean, my taxes. I just well, I guess she sends it off. I put it in a folder and then she sends it to an accountant. <laughs> Look at my wife sent me to do this to you. She's she, I'm basically just I'm just manipulating you to feel. She also said that you don't uh, you don't ever make the bed. That was the one thing that she mentioned. And I you don't you do not ever clean up the bathroom. That's another thing she said. No, I clean. I clean. I vacuum. I like vacuum. She's telling you what she said. You I, do. And I do dishes too. You're a big vacuum guy. Yeah. What do you got? You got a Dyson. You got one I of do the have fancy a Dyson. Ones? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. figured. Yeah. If you're gonna do it, you might as well get the best, right? I got a nice Dyson, and that thing—it's a motherfucker. Like I empty it out before and vacuum, and I'll like look at it for a while. I'm like, look at that. That was on our floor. I'm like, uh, I took up on mushrooms. I'm like, this is crazy, man. Have you ever vacuumed on mushrooms? We should get you to do that. No, I never did mushrooms. Never. I missed out on the mushroom scene. Man. I know. Now that's a whole thing, right? There is like California sober, where people are like, I don't drink anymore, but I smoke weed or I'll take mushrooms. Yeah. You, that's a, it's such a it's such an LA thing that people do out there. They justify it by being like, well, it's you can't get addicted to weed. No, there's people that do that and, and you're um, like, yeah, but you smoke it every fucking day. No, I come off yeah, exactly. Like I, sometimes I come off as like a narc. I'm not anti weed. I enjoyed weed and I'm fine with people that don't drink and smoke weed. But there's a lot of people that like smoke weed all day every day and they're like, Yeah, I'm sober and I'm like, No, you're fucking smashed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you are on drugs. Yeah. Like I've smoked weed. And I was out of my fucking mind. Right. I'm like, oh, yeah, man. Like, I'm like, you're fucking, you're cooked. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. So, um, yeah. But I, 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 don't I don't understand that whole, like, I'm L.A. sober. I hear that a lot now. People are like, I'm, t- I'm L.A. sober. And yeah. Like, you, oh, didn't you do ketamine like a week ago? They're like, <laughs> yeah, but it's not booze. I'm not getting fucking drunk. Yeah, I don't. Uh... But it tends to be, to be honest, not to, to be fair. It tends to be everyone I know that does that has their life significantly more in order than when I knew them and they were hitting this. Stuff of course, because no. they were driving and they were doing just they were just they were just doing wild dumb shit that was more detrimental to their life. That it's like, hey man, if that balances you, good. Whatever works for you. Yeah, I mean, there's a million bits about it. it's a common premise, but like alcohol is way worse than weed. It's worse than anything. Yeah, like it's, I it's mean, poison. I, it, again, it's been done. To death. No offense to the people that have this as a bit, but like most people don't get high and I'm like, fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll fucking get, you know, I'm, I, I, yeah. Although there are a few. There I'm are sure a few. there are, yeah. yeah. There are a few, the aggressive stoners. Yeah. I was a big break stuff when I was drinking. I would like to go out and just raise some hell. Just crack shit, break yeah. shit. That was, that was like a part, like a night out on like, the way home. You're the guy that rips out the stop sign. You're that guy. Yeah, that was me. I know that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm <laughs> a friend of that guy. You got yeah. twist and. And pull. If you twist and pull at the same time, it'll come out. That guy, I know that guy. Yeah, I did what a lot of that. What if we fuck up a mailbox? You're like, why are we doing that? Yeah, I did a lot of that. It was uh, property damage was your thing. That was one of my things. I mean, it wasn't the thing. It was one of my one things. of them. Fucking fat women was also a thing, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had a bunch of things. <laughs> um, but my my biggest uh, yucky shit when I would get drunk in college, <laughs> specifically, was uh, I would disappear from everybody. I would not tell anybody I was leaving. I didn't yeah. have a car, so it's not like I could get in a car and drive. But I would go on my little nasty fast food hunt, like a little pig, and get as much <laughs> as I could and then eat it outside by myself. Yeah. And I did this all the time. Like, and it was, like, shameful. I'd walk home because I was like, why don't I just want to eat with somebody? But I would just go get as sad and fat as I could. <laughs> I'd get, like, two burritos. It was gross. But it made me feel, like, really, like, why am I doing this? Every time I get drunk, I'd sneak away and go get food by myself. Yeah, well, people don't talk about booze making you hungry. People always talk about weed. You oh, get I can eat way more on Yeah, booze. what I'm drinking, I, I always was like, let's go fucking eat. Oh, yeah, dude, I can eat way more on alcohol. When I actually have, like, a bad week of, like, if we're partying, like, on Burt's thing, if I got high, uh, I, I'm not immediately rushing to get food. We were having a couple of drinks, like, on the river. I couldn't fucking wait to get back and yeah. eat, and I ate way too much than I ever needed to eat. Then I got on the bus, and I felt like shit, and I was like, it wasn't the booze. It was that I just overate as, you know, and it's a buffet. When you go on these tours, it's like, what do you, what do you want? They have all of the bullshit. Right. Now, do you black out ever now still? Do you ever get, are you ever like fucking like legless and cross-eyed and crazy? You're laughing immediately. So that makes me think. You do like, I, you, do, do you I black out? I haven't blacked out. I've never blacked out with you on the road. No, I didn't black out. No, no. But do you hit him? Do I hit him? Yeah. Physically, yes, I do. Like... But I assault him sober. That doesn't mean, that means nothing. For people that are listening, they can't see. McCone is back there. The Bad Friends fans know McCone. Uh, no, but you know what? I, I, I'll I have a couple of random nights where I don't black out, but, um, you know, like I'll, uh, like I'll get in an argument with a buddy 
uh, over bullshit. Right, and right. And I regret it that I because we were drunk and we were just arguing for no reason. Yeah, yeah. There was no reason we needed to fight about it. Yeah, I was big into that. Too. Yeah, it was no reason. I but hocked I a loogie on my own car one time because I was arguing about. What'd you the, do? I I hocked a loogie on my own windshield. My buddy was driving because whenever I drank, I didn't want to get arrested. I was never afraid of dying, so I'd be like, someone else drive, even if they were fucked up. Right. I just didn't want to be the one that got arrested, so I would give my buddy who was driving drunk, and we started arguing over whether or not the East River was a river. He was saying it was an estuary or whatever. Maybe you can look this up. But it's, but it, I was, but it's called the fucking East River. It is a river, right? And I think technically the, it says like the East River is an estuary or something. But this is pre-smartphones what or whatever. It? The saltwater tidal estuary. It is an yeah. estuary. Yeah. But it's called the East River. I, I mean, know, that's so, the fucking name. You were right and wrong at the same so time. So I was, we were screaming at each other like, fuck you. It's the fucking East River. <laughs> and I, I, we got to a red light and I got out of my own car and hocked a loogie like at him, at the windshield. And it just went like, Pfft. and it was just, it was my own vehicle. And I walked home and let him drive my car <laughs> over the river. like yeah. Over, over, over the, the estuary. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we were screaming at each other. We had another one. Norman was there for this. When I first started hanging with Norman a long time ago, we were on pills and booze and up. And we got in a fight because we were talking to our favorite comedians of all time. And this friend of mine said, uh, Mark Twain Mark was his Twain? favorite comedian. Mark Twain. And I was like, he's not a fucking comedian. He's like, he look it up. He did shut. Like, he would speak, and they were jokes. And you can read them, and it's funny, and there's recordings. And I'm like, but you know what we're talking about. <laughs> he's not a comic. Like, you know you're being a fucking asshole right now. And we were screaming, and Norman was like, you know, 11 years old, doing comedy for six weeks, and just sitting there like... I'm just horrified. Freaking and me out. I was like, fuck you. Just say Cosby, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, like, screaming at each other. Cosby, so, yeah. Mark Twain, same, same. Yeah. Same but, guy. Anyway, so, yeah, I, I, I could get like that when I was drinking. It was fun. But uh, never, never, the drinking and driving things, uh, hilariously, I like that you don't care if the car flips, but you're like, well, I don't want to get pulled over. Yeah, and I, I drank and drove also plenty of You did that times. a lot. Yeah, I did that one time. I called the cops. This is at the Cape Cod Comedy Lounge. In uh, in Hyannisport, and I, I sounds woke like up. something from the Family Guy, like, <laughs> Cape Cod Comedy Lounge in Hyannisport. Um, but well, it's funny because my buddy he looked exact, looked and sounded just like Peter Griffin. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, he was we ca- I literally called the police the next morning because I was like my my car's stolen, and Hyannisport is like where the Kennedys live. It's like a very nice area. Yeah, and I was like, that's it, my fucking car got stolen. What are you gonna do? And I called the cops, and literally we're, ta- we're t- they're taking down a report and everything. And, like, over the shoulder of one of the cops, I just see in the distance my car is, like, way over there. Because we went out the previous night. Oh. Like, I, the car was parked here, but I forgot we went for a nightcap, and I drove and then reparked it over there. Oh, shit. And I was like, you know what? That's my, my car's over there. And it felt <laughs> like this thing that, like, clearly I drove <laughs> drunk, but it was the day before. Like, they were like, all right, dude, glad you found it. You fucking idiot. And yeah. I'm like, okay, thanks. Sorry about that. That's tough. But anyways, so yeah. I, the the drinking and driving thing was n- never on the cards for me, thankfully. My my parents were like, you know, I couldn't afford a car when I was in school. And my dad was like, I'm not going to help you. And he was like, for, for multiple reasons. One, because, uh, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't have enough money to just throw you to get a car. And two, <laughs> you don't need a fucking car in college. You'll figure it out. You shouldn't be driving anyway. You're going to be drinking and... You don't need it. Right. And I was bummed because, you know, like a lot of guys I knew had them because Tempe is spread out. You were just, you know, it's not a, you can walk around the campus. Right. But if I wanted to go to someone's house, it was impossible. Right. So he was like, you'll figure it out. Get a bike or a skateboard, you know? And I was like, whatever. And then sure enough, like my second year into ASU, legitimately couldn't have been happier. All, and I mean, all of my friends had DUIs. Yeah. And all of them had spent time in 10 City. You know about 10 City in Phoenix? There was this, there was this, you know, uh, well-known Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who's no longer there. He used to put people with DUIs in 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 the desert. You'd live in a tent and you wear pink jumpsuits, and they give you bologna sandwiches. Wow! You've never heard of this lore, Sheriff no. Joe Arpaio? I it, don't think so. It, it was a it was a. I mean, Tent City, I think, is still out there, but it was a big deal when this guy was. No, it's done now. Yeah, yeah they just uh, yeah they just wow. did. It was a big deal. It was. I mean, it's definitely a violation of human rights. You'd have to sleep outside in the middle of the day. You'd be in a tent. It'd be like 125 cooking in Phoenix. That's insane. And he'd put men in pink jumpsuits to to uh, you know as to demean them, and you'd get bologna and mayonnaise sandwiches. Uh, most of my friends did it multiple times. Wow. My, my buddy Shu did it. Had had two DUIs, and then you know they tell you the third one, three strikes, and you're out. And so after his second DUI. 
um, he had a breathalyzer. You know, they put a breathalyzer in your car. Yeah. And when the program was done, they're ready to remove it. And he took it to the place and asked to pay for it to keep it in there because he didn't trust himself. He was wow. like, can you just keep it in here so I don't ever drink and drive ever again? Oh, that's And thoughtful. they were like, well, the state's not going to pay for that. You have to. He's like, no, 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 I understand. And they're like, okay. I mean, they they had never heard someone like wanting to protect themselves more. He was yeah, like, yeah. Uh, they were like, you're an idiot. And he was like, no, no, no. It was the smartest thing he ever did. Yeah, that's very smart. He's like, just keep it in there. The machine's already there. He's like, can I just pay for the system to just continue to be in there? So what does that cost? It was a couple grand. Wow. Yeah. Wow, he had a couple of him. bucks in his pocket, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. They wanted the system back because it's theirs, you know, but he was like, can I, I just want to keep it. I don't ever want to have to, you know, drink and drive again. Yeah, that's smart. That's uh, right. Yeah. I we just... should have done that. Should have had a couple grand to throw around. I know. I should have kept drinking and just had a DUI machine in my, or whatever. <laughs> Um, you don't yeah. miss it at all, though. Um, not too much. I mean, every once in a while. But I mean, you know, it sounds whatever is like uh, they say, like, don't think of the first drink. Think of the last drunk. Like, for certainly a beer sounds nice when I'm hanging. Like we did Norman's bachelor party. I'm like, oh, man, I would love to just get fucking ripped or the wedding, whatever. There's times where you're like, it'd be fun to get fucked up. But I'm like, I know where I how it would end. Yeah, I would bad. just be like fuck, I texted my ex-girlfriend, I sent a picture of my dick to my mother, I fucking fought a guy, whatever, and broke shit. So. In that order. Yeah, yeah. Text, text, so, send dick um, to mom, fight a guy. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I don't miss it that way. I, I like, I love the mornings now. I like to wake up in the morning and Feel I'll, healthy. I'll run and meditate and, you know, whatever the fuck, so. You meditate, huh? Yeah, big meditate. You do yoga? I used to do a lot of yoga. I don't really anymore, no. Which, I mean, I stretch in the morning because I'm old and yeah, I like I do to too. do athletic things. Stretch and run. That's your biggest thing when you exercise is running? Uh, I run. I, play, I played pickleball this morning. I'll play tennis. I, I, cardio, I have to do competitively. I, like, the idea of, like, you know, uh, yeah. running on a treadmill or doing jumping jacks or something is not fun to me. But, yeah, I'll run or, or pickleball, tennis, basketball, whatever. I will say late night runs in Los Angeles in the summer – <clears throat> every time it turns summer nights here, I can't wait to run at night. It's yeah. my favorite because the air is usually really calm. There's like no wind and it's like 70 degrees and I can run for hours. And hours. it's like, it's, it's like shocking. Sometimes I'll run seven miles Wow! and be like, holy shit. I, I used to run a lot more. I had hairline fractures in my back a couple years ago and I had to fix that through a lot of therapy, which sucked. But Back then, I was running five to seven every day, if not every other day. Yeah, I used to run like that. And I loved it, too. Yeah. And I, but I, I, but I, night runs. And my, night runs are my I don't like during the day because, you know, the sun is no bueno. Right, right. But I love night runs in the summer because it's the temperature is literally perfect. Yeah. No, L.A. is the best. It is pretty good. You it's could never be out great. here, though. No, I love it. I mean, for me, I don't know how you guys work the road. And now it becomes easier, obviously, when you're extremely successful because you can get first class or fly out the day before nice hotel all that but working the road from la just seems like such a fucking nightmare but new york is far too so for me i if i could have gone back in time i would have told myself to be central i'd have been like go right they'd be easier to fly out of like dallas or chicago or nashville but new york though it's like so many markets over there well, i yeah, mean like true. columbus cleveland detroit whatever the fuck buffalo dc philly those are all 90 minute flights or not flights at all even like tampa is like a two-hour flight yeah no it's way easier on the east coast for sure um and you're not working against the clock. Where LA, you're three hours behind all of those markets. Yeah. So you got to fly out early or whatever. And the one airport sucks. Uh, but I love LA. I mean, I could, I, I could have done it. It's weird because now I don't know if you're similar. Like, we're getting to an age where like you start to think about life. You're like, oh, I won't ever do that. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, there's things. I'm like, oh, what if I had lived in LA? And I'm like, oh, that's gone it's over now yeah yeah my half my life is over well you could just make the change now that you're having a kid too it's like make the change we're actually we're actually making a, a little bit of a move but uh we want some changes in life so we are going to do something different because i what well, exactly what you said almost as like an add-on to it i did say well i don't know if i want to sp spend another 20 years here Right. And we both were like i don't know if i want to spend another 20 years here either i've i've almost like done my time here yeah you know? yeah and That's how I feel about New York. Yeah, it's like you did your time, and so maybe maybe now time for something else. Because I do think, you know, once you're established to some degree, some degree, you can kind of, kind of duck out to somewhere else and still be a part of the culture of the other place. Yeah, yeah. You I want to move. I want to move to Jersey, like Jersey Shore. You like, like it down an there. hour? Yeah, I want to be near the ocean. I like the ocean. The I like Jersey. I do like Jersey. I like to. I want to be near the woods and grass. And I'm having a child. Like, for I live in Queens, which is sub suburban New York City. If that makes sense, like it's yeah. it's like you know it's like 
being in the valley, I guess, or whatever. And uh, but for my kid to sit in grass, we have to like take a train. Yeah. I have to walk up three flights of stairs with a stroller and a baby and then like walk eight blocks to be like, here's what grass is. <laughs> and there's like an elevated train and there's hobos and fucking all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I just would like have a backyard. I want to smoke a cigar in my backyard and see stars. Is this going to happen, you think, or no? Yeah, I you think so. You do want to make it happen. Yeah, Does yeah. she want to leave Queens? No, but no. Uh, <laughs> I'm bad. calling the shots. You're calling man. the shots, baby. No, I think, she, I think she, she gets it. She's worried about being away from the city, and it is. It's a, it's a change, obviously, but... Um, is it really that far? It's like an hour car ride or train ride. Yeah, but for you to get from Queens in the city, a half an hour... That's how I feel. I'm like, late at night, if you're taking the subway, it can be 45, 50 minutes. Right, so what's so the like, difference? Yeah, you just do it in a car. Yeah, see, I, I never understood that. That's the same thing about L.A. Like, people also have this, like, mismanagement of time in their brain where, like, where we are, you know, we're not, I'm 15 minutes over the hill to the, to the city. And people will be like, oh, the valley, it's so far. And you're like, what? What do you mean? Right. When you live in the city sometimes, it takes people that I know that live in the city in the, and I say in the city, we don't really have a city, but in the center of Los Angeles, yeah, yeah. it takes them just as long to get to the comedy store that it does for me because they've got to go through all the bullshit. Right, right. I'm just going into it from one angle. So it, it always makes me like confused when I just think people's time management, they see it as like, well, if I'm closer to it, it's easier. You're like, not always. Well, I feel like people just naturally, you present something that's different than what they know or a change. They're like, no, nah, no, nah, that's stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or people also, when they, and I'm sure I'll be the same way, when they do something, they're like, do what I did. You got to do what I did. Uh-huh. And you're like, well, I don't want to do what you did. And they're like, but please do it. <laughs> yeah. Validate my dumb decision. Yeah, exactly. Please no, do what I did. Come here, But I'll be that guy too. I'll move to Jersey. I'll be like, come down here. We've got the ocean. Come on. Yeah, but that's but that's also like when you're starting a family, it makes the most sense when you're like, we have to duck out and change something because I I feel like all my friends that did that are happier now that they instigated a change with the kid because I know some people that didn't and they stayed in the spot and they were like, it was fucking driving us nuts and we finally had to leave whatever the spot was. Yeah, I think I think raising a kid in New York City is fucking inhumane and like it's crazy. They're just gonna be like all like twitchy and fucked up, which I already am. And right. I, 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 already, I wasn't even raised in the fucking city. Wait till your kid starts vaping right out of the womb. It's gonna vape. Yeah, he's gonna be all fucked up and crazy and I don't know. It just there's too much. Also. I was saying this because I was just in Irvine for three days at the improv, and it's, mm. like, very affluent and night. And I'm like, I forgot what it's like to not be clocking every single person. Yes. From walking around L.A. and New York, like, literally every person. You're like, what's this guy? Okay, he seems, he's got a nice shoe. He must be okay. What's that guy? Why is he yelling? <laughs> you know, it, it, it takes yeah. that energy. There's, like, bandwidth being used up. Totally. By seeing, like, am I in danger? Is this day? And that's without a fucking baby. Yeah, now when you have one, you're even more on high alert. Irvine's like robotic. No one even exists. No, it's it almost does. like they're holograms of people. I had never been there before, and I was like, "This is I could now I'm I'm getting older. I got a little bit of money. I'm like, this is all right. I like this. It is not. Orange County is very nice. It's super isolated. It's its own world. Like they don't even associate with us. Right. We're we're this is yuck town up here. Right. That's fantasy land. That's right. like oh, th- everything is okay. No. There's super low crime levels. Like, they don't worry the way that we worry in L.A. about bullshit. Yeah, it no feels like... No one's going to steal your, uh, your catalytic converter <laughs> in Irvine, you know? It feels like if a homeless person walked through that mall where the Irvine Improv is, they would just fucking shoot him and throw him in the ocean. <laughs> it's like by his belt and be like, sorry, everybody. Sorry for the uh, blood. We'll get that up. The moment he steps onto a piece of the Irvine mall, he just evaporates. They're like, yeah, we just built a new system for hobo evaporation to get rid of these scum they all they're up here big time they're is they're the worst they've ever been which is not a reason for me to move but uh it's a bummer it's great well hollywood uh, has always had a little bit of seediness oh it's worse now yeah but uh, yeah i was here a month ago when you blew me off and i was driving (laughs) i I was driving up hollywood boulevard and i was like this is fucking wild because downtown was always crazy it still is gross yeah but i mean it and someone just told me it it was always sixty thousand homeless people was the number i just heard it was more like 73 or seventy four thousand now god i don't know which is like i've never heard that number i would have assumed it's more than that i feel like it's in the hundred thousand what is it now over seventy-five. Over 75. I bet you it's closer to hundred. That's more th- than a Morgan Wallen show. <laughs> I mean, that's fucking, <laughs> that's insane. By the way, how could they document that? That's that's one of those uh, weird stats where you're like, they count it. They're just walking around. Yeah, one. Oh, this guy. Two, sir. Please don't move, <laughs> sir. 
You're talking to like mentally ill people <laughs> hoping they just stay put. No, I bet you there's so many more than we could ever wrap our little heads around. Well, LA too, there's a there's much more of an edge to the homeless people here. It feels a lot more like I don't know what drug or whatever. Well, because you're allowed more. to do drugs in the sun, so it promotes this like air of uh I can do this forever. In New York, it's like those homeless people are like fighting for their lives. Out here, they they think they can get away with it for as long as they can. And then that probably creates some sort of like anger when it doesn't continue to be as fun as it used to be. Right, right. Right. Like people in New York probably doing drugs just like people that are that are homeless, that are on something, are probably doing it just so they can survive. Out here, they're like, I thought I was gonna live this way forever. It was right. a party. I was fucking partying on Hollywood Boulevard. You know, I was d- 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 fucking doing smack, <laughs> dancing on the, st- uh, the, the L- Lucille Ball star. Like, that's, it's almost, like, too fun to do drugs out here that you get homeless. If you're homeless doing them, it's probably like a dreamscape instead of, like, a hellscape. Yeah, yeah. I always think it's funny, like, the people that come to L.A. on vacation, because it never occurred to me. Mm. I guess my we were from the East Coast, so it was like people went to Disney World. Nobody was like, we're going to Hollywood. Yeah, same I mean, I'm also family. from the suburbs or whatever. But you see, like, tourists, and they must think, because, like, nobody that's never been here or isn't from here or in show business has any idea, what, like, what Hollywood the neighborhood is. People yeah. think Hollywood, obviously, they think of the Hollywood Hills and fucking, you know. Well, they really uh, think of Beverly Hills. Meryl Hill. Streep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they think and, of like, that thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Hollywood, if you went to, like, take us to Hollywood, you'd be like, get us the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go back to LAX. This is nuts. <laughs> No, it is. It's like uh, when they. When I always say that whenever they show like the Laker game, Staples Center is da- is downtown. They'll always have sweeping shots of like Beverly Hills and then the ocean. You're like, that's 35 miles away. Yeah, yeah. That 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 is like that's literally like showing Yankee Stadium and then showing something in Jersey. And you're like, these things are nowhere near right. each other. Well, they do that with the Yankees and stuff too. They'll do like the Empire State Building and you're downtown. Like, what is, what is like, this? Has no, no. To do show with the this. fucking South Bronx is <laughs> yeah, what we're, yeah. where we're at. Show the place where it's at. Um, I'm happy that you're in town. Uh, you're such a funny dude. We're on a show together tonight. Yes. I'm excited because finally I can see you. I had to duck out and go to the other spot. Um, do you want to plug anything right now? Yeah, before sure. Before I, I let you fly. I don't know when this comes out, but I have a new special coming out August 18th on YouTube. August 18th on the YouTube. Yes. Joe List special called? Called uh, Enough for Everybody. And enough for everyone. Yes. Enough for everybody. Yes. And there's another one that is also currently there because it's YouTube. I have, this will be my third YouTube special. There's one called I Hate Myself, and there's one called This Year's Material. Those are out now. And um, we'll put the link in the description out. below for you guys of all three of those specials yeah. uh, to watch. Please support it. Is there a place where they click to give money? Do you put that up there or no? I'm going to, yeah, that'll be in the comment thing when it comes out. I, be, I, I like, I'm a big, I think that's, you know, I had a conversation with a few other comics that, that put it up on YouTube. Like, oh, I don't know if I should. 100% you should. If you're giving away the special for free, what's it to, uh, to a fan to give a couple of bucks? Yeah, I think, no. I think, why the fuck not? I know there's weird, some people are like, oh, I don't know if I won. It's like, why? No, yeah, I made, uh, I mean, I didn't make, I lost money, but I may, I got, I received money, quite a bit of money from people yeah. doing that. Three well, bucks, if, five if bucks. If you're a real fan uh, of mine and want to support us, please support Joe. Thank you. Uh, watch the specials, donate, because uh, put enough content for you guys that we do every single fucking day, if not week, depending on who we are. It's uh, it's costs a lot of the money to do the thing, so it's nice that you can put up the special for free for people to watch. So hopefully they'll share some of that love and share it around to people that you know. Spread the word. Uh, we end the show the same way. Oh you look into that camera right there. You say one word or one phrase. It used to be a long time ago it was a word, and people were like, I don't fucking have one word, so they did a phrase. You can pick one word or one phrase to end the episode. It'll be embedded in history forever. This will end up in the Smithsonian. I'm calling it now. Whenever you're ready, look into that camera and say one word or one phrase. Oh, God. Yeah. I gave you enough time to think about it. All right. Suck your own dick. In here, <laughs> we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers.